Another homeless person burned to death. It's the sixth one this year. And the killer? Nothing, Henry. The victims are faceless and nameless, and no one cares. Not the media, the police, or politicians. Some people do care. I care. There's almost nothing we can do from here. Go talk to them. Get their names. Count them. Offer them our help and resources. Convince them they can have a better life. Take a look at this list. In all these places, there are homeless people we still haven't contacted. We have to continue our work, despite the danger. I... I'll do my best. I'll start with the first one, and... Cadway Station? Forget that one. Wait for me here. Want me to go with you? I'd rather you stayed and watched the van. It's too dangerous. It's on the list because... How should I know? No one has gone there since the hall collapsed. And frankly, I doubt there's anyone still living in that hellhole. Do me a favor. Stay out of trouble, okay?
Heretic has profaned sacred ground choke. What should we do with him? Have ourselves some fun. <laughs> Brothers and sisters! Brothers and sisters! Silence! I've asked you to come to the Hall of Eternity. Because the peace of our community has been disturbed. <gasps> Show yourself, heretic. Who are you? My name is Henry White. Good. That's what appears on your ID. Did you think for one minute we wouldn't look in your pockets, Henry White? So, Henry White. Let's talk about you. What does your family do? Answer, or I'll shoot, heretic. My parents are wealthy. If you let me go, you'll get a reward. We don't want their money, but it might help them overcome the trauma of your disappearance. What do you say? But let's not prejudge him, brothers and sisters. Let's let him defend himself. Why have you profaned my temple? I've come to help you. You can see that I work for the children of Don Quixote. It's a foundation that helps homeless people by offering them shelter, food, resources, and even identification papers. Is that so? What do you think, brothers and sisters? Henry White. 
I've been alive for over 80 years. I can see through your lies. You work for a foundation that works to deprive us of our rights. <gasps> look at us. Do we look like we need shelter, food, resources? <laughs> In what way is all that going to help us, Heretic? In nothing! In nothing! Shoot now, Joe. Should I tell Boris to shoot everyone? Or do you think you can come up with a reason why your existence should continue? I don't want to seem conceited, but according to IQ tests, my intelligence is above average. So, you're intelligent. I never would have guessed. <laughs> Prove it. Have you ever played chess? I'm not bad. I'm champion in my university. White has a chance at checkmate in one move. What is it? This move is famous, the Evergreen from 1852. Bishop takes the knight at e7 and checkmate. Well done. But it was your memory that saved you, not your deductive capacity. Let's see now. White makes a single move. That, although it doesn't result in checkmate, leaves black without options. Move the pawn from G2 to G3. Easy. Yes, as you said, it was easy. Let's see if you can resolve this one. Despite its desperate situation, White has a chance at checkmate in one move. Why are you making it so easy for me? Move the bishop from d6 to e7 and checkmate. I don't need to test you any further, Henry White. You are intelligent, there's no doubt. But what is the source of this intelligence? God or the devil? You project kindness, but I perceive something dark in you, heretic. I need to cleanse my soul before deciding you. Life! The coin of judgment has been tossed, Henry White. Let Boris block the exit and make sure that the heretic doesn't escape or bother you. He wouldn't dare try, Joke. As for the rest of you, do me a favor and don't go too far away. <laughs> Keep looking, then! Find my Danny and call me when you have him, or... Hello? Hello? Fuck! I think I know what that phone call you received earlier was about, and I wanted to say... Then I'm sorry. What are you sorry about, eh? There's nothing to be sorry about. They'll find Danny. They better. Happy birthday. Who 
is Choke? The reason I'm still alive. How old are you turning today? I would have rotted here if he hadn't come with his energy, his pickpocketing techniques, his drivel, and his will to live. Do you think Choke is crazy? A total nutball. He must have been hit on the head or something, because he can't remember anything from when he was young. What a shame. Look, wax from the candles has dripped on the cake. Sometimes he remembers things. Little flashes having to do with the scar on his hand. With the why. Something about some cult. Then he loses it, like now. <laughs> and thinks he's in the past. Funny old bastard, isn't he? Do you really think he wants to kill me? Joke doesn't mess around. For him, this is sacred ground. And you've profaned it. If he decides you should die, you die. Let me go. Please, my family is wealthy. They can pay you a handsome reward. I used to make $3,000 a day. 3000 And look at me now. Do you think I give a shit about money? I'm the heir to White Enterprises, and someday, it'll all be mine. Help me escape, and I'll make you rich. I don't want to be rich. There's only one thing I want, and you can't give it to me. Not you or anyone else. But he will turn up. Make a wish. Are you the person who brought the toys that are on the platform? Yes. Danny will want toys. Did you know it was his birthday? I'll go pick him up at school. We'll catch the subway at Cadway Station, and I don't want to be late. No overtime today. I'll drop whatever I'm doing and go to meet him. Happy birthday. What did you do before you lived here? Me? I set prices for things. Companies used to pay me a fortune for me to tell them if something was expensive or cheap, if it was worth buying or selling at a certain price. I worked a lot. Too much. It wasn't. Is your name really Boris? You don't have an accent. I don't want people to remember my real name. I hate names. If Choke calls me Boris, I'm Boris. And many happy returns. Call for you on this phone, Boris. Hello? Where is Danny? Where? No, I don't read the papers. What happened at Cadway Station? No. It's not him. That child is not my Danny. It's not him. You understand? That is not my son. We'll keep looking and call me when you find him. Not someone else. Him!
<sighs> I'm watching the van, man. It's just that... Come, Cooper. But didn't you want me? They're crazy and armed, you hear me? Be careful. Come on, Henry. No way I'm falling for that. The time's come, heretic. Huh? Prepare to die. <sighs> For Christ's sakes, Cooper, would you stop blubbering? You're a disgrace to the young pioneers. But you know what? That's over. <laughs> oh, now he's wetting his pants like a little old lady. Who'd you learn that from? Your sainted mother? Why don't you make a torch? Oh, yeah, now I remember, because you don't know how! Look, everybody, at the idiot who can't figure out how to make a torch! But no laughing, because it's pathetic! And he's a scumbag! You're a scumbag, aren't you, Cooper? You're pathetic, and you're a scumbag, right? Huh? Mr. Scumbag! God's green earth are you trying to do, Cooper? Make a torch? A torch? And how do you intend to keep the rag from falling off the bat, scumbag? It's not big enough to tie around the end! Playing with fire, Cooper? Are you scared of the dark? Do you want me to change your sheets? Or would you rather I peed in your bed to save you the time, scumbag?
stupid! You scumbag! Why did you hit Johnson, huh? He said what about your mother? There's probably some truth in it. And it's about time you learned to think, instead of resorting to violence all the time. You are pathetic, Cooper. After cleansing my soul of lies of the malignant one, I have filled it with discernment and have reached a decision. The heretic Henry White shall be subjected to the judgment of God and thereby shall be flung into the well of truth. If the rats, those diabolical beings that inhabit it, perceive traces of divine goodness in Henry White's soul, they will rise up against him tearing into his mortal flesh with their nails and teeth until he bleeds to death. In this case, we will rejoice at having led the soul of a just man to heaven. But if on the contrary, Henry White is as diabolical as they are, they will treat him with respect. And in that case, I myself shall, with a single shot, Send his abominable, detestable, and repugnant soul to hell! Nevertheless, before flinging him into the well, I shall grant him enough time to ask forgiveness of the High One and prepare his soul in peace. We pray silently for your poor soul, Henry.
Go! Have you ever heard of a wedge? Huh? Even if we had the biggest one in the world, we wouldn't be able to get it into your head. Ain't that right, scumbag?
souls from paradise. Look all of you upon Henry White, the heretic who- Tread on holy ground because he is a scumbag, right, Cooper? Now, what are you gonna do for your friends? Take a piss in the well like a sissy boy? Or are you gonna act like a man for once? Come on, shoot! You got to go. oh. Henry? There aren't any rats. They were laughing at us. At Henry White. What are we gonna do with them? Henry, you okay? We're not gonna burn these ones. Mr. White, your six o'clock is here. It's John yesterday. Thank you, Lori. My compliments to your stylist. Great suit. I picked it out, Mr. White. Ah, then my compliments to Human Resources for hiring you. You hired me yourself, Mr. White. Oh, I see. Tell him to come right in, please. Mr. White will see you now, Mr. Yesterday. Thank you. Come over here, John. Have a look at this sunset. My advice to you is, if in your next life you come back as a filthy rich businessman, remember to get an office with a view like this. It's the only part that's really worth it in the end. I can't even remember what I've done in this life, Mr. White. Henry. Call me Henry. You used to call me that. How is your mother doing? She has a slight cold. She seems like a good person. She's been telling me a lot about my life, but I can't seem to remember anything about it. Not a thing. Give her my best. And let me pick your brains for a moment. What has she told you? You never used to talk about yourself in the old days. What has your mother told you about your childhood? All there is to tell. Only child, shy, few friends, obedient, athletic. I just wish I could remember. What do you know about your youth? I threw myself into my schoolwork. Apparently, I'm smart. I have a master's in the history of religion from my mother. She's a worldwide authority on the history of satanic cults. The terrible thing is, is that I don't remember a single thing I learned in all those years in the university, except what was in the books you sent me in the hospital and what my mother has been telling me. Do you have a partner? My mother says I had a girlfriend a long time ago. Uh, Suzanne. Now I'm single, it seems. What has she told you about your likes? This is strange. She told me that I never liked grapes. But the other day I tried one and it was delicious. Interesting. To what extent are our likes and dislikes conditioned by our memories? By the way, I love grapes. Everything all right at the hospital? Yes, of course. Thank you for taking care of the bill. I didn't do it. My money did. Sometimes it gets tired of rotting in the bank. Tell me, John. Have you managed to remember anything about your past on your own? No. Well, sometimes I get 
Small flashes of random images, sounds. It's happened three times now. Watching a movie, looking at my hand, seeing a bluebird. Curious, isn't it? Tell me more. What was it you remembered when you were watching that movie? It took place in Paris. Suddenly, I saw, I don't know, a sort of antique shop. A girl. What came to mind when you looked at your hand? Well, it was actually the scar on my hand. The image of a strange person appeared in my mind. Some kind of priest in a church. He was talking about killing someone. Me. What happened when you looked at this blue bird? It perched on the windowsill in the hospital. Suddenly I saw myself with a beard and long hair in a blizzard. Oh, goodness, John. I haven't even offered you a chair. I'm very sorry for what happened, John. Very sorry. I can't help thinking that it's all my doing. On the contrary, I've come here to thank you. And to get some answers, I imagine. What do you want to know? I want to know who I am. I'm not God, John. If you want to solve that mystery, go to a church and pray. I can only resolve human dilemmas. Why did you send those books on satanic cults to me in the hospital? To help your mother re-educate you, and with an eye to a matter that we had between us. One that we still have. What connects me to you? There's a lot, John. You were working for me when you tried to kill yourself. You got too involved in the investigation. You lost your perspective. Lori has the contract, by the way. Ask for her copy on your way out if you want. What did my investigation consist of? I hired you to get information about the Order of the Flesh, a satanic cult from the 15th century, in the hope that this would help us trap a present-day killer. My own investigation wasn't going anywhere. What had you discovered before hiring me? The Order of the Flesh was founded in 1463 by an ex-priest named Hines de Arduña. What was the Order of the Flesh about? We know very little. They worshipped the devil and combined alchemy with torture, in search of God knows what, until the Inquisition began to persecute them. Did the Inquisition put a stop to the Order of the Flesh? In 1498, when it seemed like Cardinal Cisneros, the Grand Inquisitor, had them cornered, they disappeared from the map. They evaporated. No one knows how or to where. What did I find out? You started doing some research in the archives at the University of Salamanca in Spain, and you found something curious. A missive from the guard Captain Miguel de Somosierra to Cardinal Cisneros, written on the 31st of August, 1501. What did the letter say? He stated that on that very morning his troops had traveled to the temple where they suspected the order was meeting, that they went in and interrupted a demonic ritual, that they killed all its members without mercy, and that finally they burned the church, reducing it to rubble and the ashes of satanic cadavers. The letter didn't say anything else? Yes, the captain congratulated him for the tip that led them to the temple. Literally, he said, Thankfully, Your Excellency saw the relationship between the Order of the Flesh and the Holy Cathedral of Our Lady of Paris that led us to reveal the evil in an apparently holy church. What relationship is there between Notre Dame and the Order? That was the next and final step in your investigation. Paris. What did I find out in Paris? I don't know. You disappeared there for 15 days when you finally called. You were very distressed. You told me that you found something very important and that you couldn't tell me over the telephone. So I flew to Paris. Why didn't I tell you what I found out? Because when I arrived at your hotel, you had attempted suicide. You were dying. You had swallowed mercury. Plus, you had cut your hand drawing the symbol of the Order of the Flesh on your skin. It looked like a Y. How did you know it was a suicide? You left a note. Forgive me, Henry, but to get to the bottom of this, first I must die. 
Tell me about this killer. He's been killing hobos for years. First he only burned them, but then his modus operandi evolved. How did the hobo killer evolve? He stopped burning his victims and started torturing them using satanic rituals. What led you to link him to this cult? At a certain point, he started carving a sort of Y into the bodies of his victims, the symbol of the Order of the Flesh. Why are you so interested in capturing him? For a time, I worked as a volunteer in an NGO called the Children of Don Quixote. They help the homeless. Over the years, I stopped working with them because there's something that can help them more than I can. My money. It's been covering all their expenses since my parents died and I took over White Enterprises. I'm not going to allow anyone to keep attacking these people, John. And you're going to help me. Why did you hire me? I hired your mother first, John. But after a while, she came to a dead end. I didn't know where to go from there. She said that if anyone could get further, it would be you. Now you know everything, John. Talk to Lori. Have her give you your tickets. What tickets? Ah, did I forget to mention that? You're leaving for Paris this afternoon. That's okay with you, right? Yeah, Henry. I need to know who I am. Exactly, John. Your father would be proud of you. He just went in. You're sure the suite does not bring back any memories, Monsieur Yesterday? No, I'm sorry. Dommage. Well, call me if you need anything at all. Dinner with a Dalton Entertainment. You get my drift? Blonde, brunette, bold, black, white, young, oldies, sex pots, fat ladies, dwarves, hussies, spinsters, natural, surgically enhanced, clean, or filthy. And 10% discount if I get to watch. Okay? Thank you, Albert. I'll, I'll keep it in mind. Your secret is safe with me, Monsieur Yesterday. I'll keep it from anyone who doesn't say these two words, including if it is you.
Hello, son. Have you arrived? Have you had dinner? How is the flight? Have you remembered anything? The trip was oddly uncomfortable. Mr. White had reserved the entire first-class section for me, and I had two flight attendants hovering over me the whole time. It was impossible to get any reading done. Guess what? On the plane, they offered me grapes for dessert. And? I tried them, Mom. They were delicious. How strange. When you were a little boy, you used to spit them in my face. But I'm glad you've finally come to like them, son. You've never eaten enough fruit. It's very strange, Mom. I've... I've stopped remembering things since I met Mr. White. On my last visit, I stored something using a password that I can't remember now. Any ideas what it is? I don't know, son. Frank for your father, maybe. Elaine for me. Suzanne for that girlfriend you had. Or perhaps something having to do with Satanism. I don't know. Mom, I don't think I tried to kill myself. What are you saying, son? It might have been an accident. Imagine that I broke a thermometer and that the mercury fell into a glass and then I drank from it without noticing and... John, John, you don't have to reassure me. I know that nothing will happen this time. I trust you. You're intelligent and strong. John, how are you doing? Fine, Mr. White. Henry. To you, I'm just Henry. Yes, Henry, pardon me. The hotel is really over the top, Henry. Thank you. Over the top? You'll never change, John. That's exactly what you said to me the last time. The front desk clerk is a little odd, don't you think? I don't remember him. I'll have him fired, all right? No, no, don't do that. It's really nothing. Better. We all have a right to make a living. When I was in New York, you mentioned my father. Did you ever meet him? Excuse me, John. What do you have for me, Cooper? A woman of about 50, passed out, drunk. In one piece? Almost. Take her to the generator room. I want her awake and calm. Call me when she's ready. Excuse me, John. Where were we? Ah, yes. Dementia is a very hard thing. But let's not talk about that, okay? I'm starting to remember things, Henry. Congratulations. I knew that this trip would help you. I just knew it. I didn't try to kill myself, Henry. Someone forced me to swallow the mercury. What are you saying? I'll send a bodyguard. I'll call Lori. I'm sure we have someone in Paris. Don't leave the hotel. Someone will come for you. The last time I was in the hotel, I hid something. Interesting. What could it be? Well, call me if you find it. Remember that anything you turn up, no matter how minor, can help us save lives. What do you know about my suicide attempt? Nothing. Well, that Mr. White found you, and he took you to a hospital in some kind of private ambulance. He made sure no one was the wiser. We don't want any scandals here. Did I have any visitors? Not a single one, monsieur, yesterday. I'm sorry to say that your behavior was very boring. Despite the fact that I dropped the price of my very best girls as much as 20%, have you had a change of heart? No. Thank you. 25%? 30? Who's been in the room since my previous visit? Only Mr. White, the maid, Matthew from Maintenance, and me. But not a single guest. Someone has to clean the room, even if there are no guests, sir. By the way, if you're interested in her, be in the room tomorrow when she comes to clean it. She's new and frisky. Free fan dance on the first visit. I just went to leave a small welcome gift on the terrace a little while ago, monsieur. The maid noticed that the extractor fan in the bathroom was not working, so I sent Matthew to fix it. Mr. White came to the hotel because you called him. He went up to the room, and that was when he found you half dead. Is this hotel named after Gustave Doré, the artist? Mais non. It's named after, uh, well, another Doré. 
who's also an artist in his own way. The funny thing is that he's a great, great grandson of the original Doré. I know that you have an envelope for me. Of course, Monsieur Yesterday. But as per your instructions, you have to say two words before I can give it to you. Dommage. You're not getting any closer.
What really happened to my father? Was he crazy? Son, I would have preferred for you not to find out. I told you that your father died in the tragedy at Cadway Station, but that's not what really happened. As I've told you, your father was the world's leading expert on satanic sects. The best. He was my thesis director. That's how we met. It's true that your father was in Cadway when the station caved in, but he survived. And he stayed there, living in its ruins. I begged him to come back home, but it was no use. He said that the station was the only place he felt safe. After the collapse, your father was traumatized. He said that he was being persecuted by a satanic sect called the Unmentionable Ones. The last time I went to see him, I tried everything, but he didn't want to leave. He called me a heretic and he disappeared without a trace. Frank yesterday was a great man, John, a true scholar, a good husband, and the best of fathers. He loved you very much, John. Just don't make the same mistakes he did. Give me the envelope, Albert. Revolution. Alchemy. We're getting back our memory, huh? I'll bring it right up. Here you go, Monsieur Yesterday. Thanks a lot, Albert. Their photos? Huh? Pretty photos. Naked, dirty, trashy, fifi, lascivious. If you don't have a buyer, I can find you one. Ten percent discount if I can Good watch. Good night, Albert. Oh, I see. That bulge must be some kind of toy. I'll leave you alone. Pervert. Do the words, the Evergreen 1852, mean anything to you? Of course. It's the name of a legendary chess match. Anderson moves the knight to e7 and defeats Dufresne in 24 moves. Did I ever tell you what I wanted the contents of the envelope for? There's no need to, Monsieur Yesterday. But when you're finished with it, I'll buy it of you. 20% extra if it's clean.
I'm John Yesterday, a specialist in satanic sects. I'm John Yesterday, a specialist in satanic sects. Thanks for the information, Mr. Yesterday. See that door? Use it to go back where you came from. I need to find out some things about the relationship between Notre Dame Cathedral and alchemy, and Mr. Petit is one of the few people to have researched this topic. Find out for yourself. Mr. Petit isn't available. Have you heard of the Inquisitor, a serial killer who's targeting panhandlers in New York? I believe Mr. Petit can help me find him. First, you'll have to find Mr. Petit, and I doubt very much that you'll be able to do that. If you could just tell me where he is. In hell, Mr. Yesterday. My father committed suicide two months ago. Go and look for him there. I'm... I'm so sorry. How clumsy of me. Very clumsy. Sorry. Is there any way I can make it up to you? Can I buy you a cup of coffee? I should say no. Are you afraid? Of what? Of you, John. These months have brought a little peace to my shitty little world. Now you'll be leaving. I'm in no position to lose any more male figures in my life. Was I that bad? That's not it. But I don't think I'm going to flatter your male ego by saying otherwise. I don't kiss up to people. Hey, <laughs> it's not the first time we've done this. Don't be an idiot. I'm talking about my father's diary. You never told me your father kept a diary. I don't confide in just anyone. It's full of notes about alchemy, Notre Dame, a satanic sect. Right up your alley. I'll give it to you tomorrow, and then there'll be nothing left to keep you here. The diary opened my eyes, Pauline. I have to go to a mental hospital in New York. You're leaving. Come with me. I'll get my things from the hotel. You get the diary. We'll meet back at the airport, okay? I should say no. I know what you're here for. You must know where you left it. Take the diary and get out of here. Good morning. Do we know each other? Absolutely. Since about five seconds ago, my friend. Marcel Richard, draftsman at your service. Do you like antiques, Marcel? No, to tell the truth, I am hiding from my creditors. If you see a short blonde man who looks like money come in, you let me know. You wouldn't happen to know anything about alchemy by any chance? Absolutely. Mix vodka with lemon, whiskey with soda, or rum with pineapple juice. None of these transforms metal into gold, but they do something better. They transform women into goddesses. I'm looking for a diary. It's supposed to be in the back room, but if you should run across it here... I shall make it my personal quest, my friend. If I have to kill someone to get your diary, I'll do it.
Good morning. At last, a polite young man. Don't you agree, Walter? Are you in Paris on vacation? Exactly, dear. We're celebrating our undivorce. Uh, Walter. Did you say you just got undivorced? Exactly. We'd been divorced for just six months when Walter had a heart attack. He changed completely, became a totally different person. So I said, do you want to get undivorced? And he said... So you two can't remember why you divorced? I don't know. Well, we used to fight a lot. Remember how you always used to contradict me, Walter? I know it's hard to tell these things from the outside, but I can assure you that everything's different now. I'm happy to hear that you've reconciled. Life gave us another chance, dear. And I swear on my guardian angel that we're going to make the most of it. Is Walter okay? No after effects? Just the opposite, dear. He's much better like this. Isn't that right, Walter? Is it your first time in Paris? Our very first. We've been wanting to come here all our lives. But things got in the way. Kids, work, and then, well, <laughs> the divorce. And it is told that Don Gines de Ordoña, a priest, poured mercury from his right hand, sulfur from his left hand, sprinkled salt on top, and lit a fire underneath that blazed white heart like the depths of hell. The secret is on the façade. I know it's there somewhere. For the master alchemist, everything is made up of these few elements, the order of the flesh, and its unknown carnal work, must also be based on them.
Disgust me. You smell like shit because you're a scumbag. Huh, you little scumbag? But I'm gonna leave you looking like a princess. Anyone ever give you a manicure? I found him, Cooper. Henry? Who? Boris. He's been in Happy Dale, a mental hospital about an hour from here for the past two years. Should we go after him? He knows too much. Toothpick. No, he's totally around the bend. No one pays any attention to his delusions. I'm sure our friend would like to have a long chat with him, don't you? comforting to know that I'm not the only thing you've forgotten, John. But I won't make the same mistake twice. You've got exactly two hours to look for the diary in the back room, and then you're out of here. You can go fuck yourself and leave me in peace. I don't have to put up with this crap. I don't understand what you mean about doing it for your father. I saw the same excitement in you that I saw in him. Notre Dame. Alchemy. The Order of the Flesh. You're both after the same thing. What are you afraid of? The same thing will happen to you as to him. He took his own life, John. I don't know if it was the investigation or what, but he took his own life. 
What was your father like? My father was a good man. He was quiet, affectionate, solitary. He hardly left the house after my mother died. Did your father share his hobby with anyone? A friend, for example? When I was a little girl, yes. A strange man. He went by the name of... Choke, I think. He became stranger and stranger as time went by. One day he disappeared and never came back. Do you know why you... No, never mind. I excuse me. Why my father committed suicide? No. He had spent the entire day with an American collector. They made some good deals. The man was going to pay us a lot of money. We were going to restore the store, travel. When I woke up the next morning, he had hanged himself. Amnesia. I was poisoned with mercury. Some things I don't know, but I do have some answers, thanks to your father's diary. Henry White is... Henry White will be most pleased to learn this. The diary. I killed the girl just like I killed her father. Oh my god! Hands up. Get out, you bastard. Get out, or I'll make you drink mercury again after I finish off the girl. Out!
you want to thank. Did you find what you are seeking? I'm not seeking it anymore. I don't even remember what it was. Ah, your memory. And now, what are you seeking? Your teachings. You already have them. But, and swordsmanship? You are not ready. And the unknown sense? You are not ready. When will I be? Bring me a truth flower. And you'll teach me to use the unknown sense? Bring me a truth flower. Can't I hold the katana, Master? Pick it up. Can I take it with me? If you take it out of this room, I'll replace the yak's skull with yours. What is the unknown sense, Master? In reality, it is nothing more than knowing how to fight in the dark. But I thought it would sound more mystical if I called it a nonsense. <laughs> Am I right? What is the truth flower? An ordinary flower from an ordinary bush. But basically, and where you're concerned, it's an ordinary mind fuck to test you. I believe there is a truth flower on a nearby peak on top of a nest. That's true. But unless you learn to fly, you're going to have a hard time. Think, young disciple. Why do you want me to bring you a truth flower and not something else? Because that will demonstrate that you have the wisdom, the patience, and the perseverance required to learn control of the unknown sense. I understand. Bah! Do you know what it is? We masters like to feel like gods, and gods like to pose arbitrary challenges. Don't eat this apple. Don't work on Saturday. Don't touch yourself there. Can I have some more water? Yes, but you'll be taking my ration for the day. You can be sure that I'll get it back. <laughs> 
this very day, if I have to drink it directly from your open belly. Shall we play? Let's play. Six, you could be bluffing, but I say seven. Let's take a look. I win. I'll add another glass of water to the ones you already owe me. Entryway is dead. The soil is good, but the seed was bad. It had to die. It dishonored the soil that nurtured it.
Why can't I take the katana out of this room, Master? Because you don't know how to use it. I want you to become familiar with its weight. But without you going farther than I can smell you. When will you show me how to fight with the katana? When you're happy. And when will I be ready to learn sword fighting? When I say so, young disciple. The swords of the great masters always have a story behind them. What's your story? I will tell you in due time. Master, is it true that you defeated the dragon yet? Mm, as true as it is that I never spare the life of anyone who doubts it. Shall we play? Let's play. Three, you could be bluffing, but I say one. Let's take a look. Did you win? That's enough. Pick one of my treasures. That's what you want. It's yours.
Learn the art of sword fighting. I will teach you to clean it. Hair. Black. Attack. Disarm. And forgive. gathered about alchemy and you head to Scotland. We'll meet up at Inverness Airport and we'll find St. Fergus Church together. You got that? I just can't say no. Trust me. Pauline? Yes? There is one little thing that I haven't told you yet. What? I love you. Please understand that this is highly irregular. Only the donations Mr. White makes to this institution and the hopelessness of Boris's case have persuaded me to let you conduct this experiment. Remember the rules. No touching him, no waking him up, no upsetting him. If anything happens, alert the orderly. Ernie, he'll know what to do. Good luck, Mr. Yesterday. Hello, Boris. Joke? Joke! <laughs> Who's this joke? It's taken a long time, but I knew you'd come. <laughs> After what you did for me. No, Boris, no, I'm... You don't remember? They were torturing me in that warehouse. The only way to get in was through the rooftop. You climbed up that chimney and... <laughs> you did it.
I was that guy. You died for me, Choke. And then you saved me. I don't understand any of this. Evidently, I didn't die. How did I survive? How were you able to live through that? You killed yourself, Choke. You were dead as a doornail. How do you know that I'm this Choke person? By your voice. It's the same voice you had when you became young again. Who were those people who were torturing you? Two fucking punks. Laurel and Hardy in asshole version. Tell me about the fat guy. He came out of nowhere with a gun and emptied the chamber. The last shot was right in the middle of your head. Tell me about the thin guy. Henry White. He seemed like a lamb when you started having fun with him, scaring him, but who would have guessed that he was a fucking sadist? How did we get to that industrial park? You don't remember? It's because you died again since. I don't know why you have to go and forget everything each time you die. It makes no sense. We arrived in the torturer's van. They had just killed you, and you came back to life. But instead of being old like you were before, you were young, and you had the same voice as you do now. You pulled the tape off my mouth, and I brought you up to date. You're crazy. How could I come back to life? Hey, you're the one who does weird shit, Joke. So I'm not the crazy one here. <laughs> who are you? They call me Boris. I live in Catway Station, and I'm... I'm your only friend. I can't remember anything. I don't know who I am. You're a joke. You're immortal. Well, no, you are mortal. Until you're not. <laughs> What do they want from us? I don't know. I only know that they aren't going to burn us. Sounds good, doesn't it? Let's get out of here. Let's go. I can't joke. I have a broken leg. You go. We're wasting time. Do it now! Let's get them out. Shit! Bastard. Where's the other one? Easy, Cooper. Where the hell's Choke? You can't have closed the door properly. It opened and his body fell out. I'm gonna go look for it. Should I come with you? Stay here. And make sure the other one doesn't die on us. I want him to be alive when I get back. Understood? could have taken off right then. Who was I to you? If you couldn't remember me and hardly believed me. But you decided to save me. Joke. Me.
That's it. Dying and coming back to life left you so traumatized that it gave you amnesia. My name is Choke, and yours, the same. If you're alive, then I am not crazy. You want to know who you are? And what this is about? Pay close attention. You've got to rescue a guy named Boris, who's being held prisoner in the...
One last thing, John. Don't take any unnecessary risks. Do it for me.
Are you still there, Choke? Choke, is that you? I, uh, I have to go, but I'll come back for you. Don't forget that today is my daddy's birthday, okay? I'll try not to. Is this it? Yeah, it must be. We have to take advantage of the daylight we have left. I'll start unloading things. You take a look, okay? Holding up okay? More or less. The trip was exhausting. Thanks for schlepping through all those miles for me. I couldn't refuse. But you're right, it was exhausting. I was in pretty good shape up to Glasgow, but then exhaustion got the better of me. I parked in front of a motel next to the highway and slept three hours in the car. 
but it looks like it wasn't enough. I'm in the same shape as you are. This jet lag is killing me. Let's take advantage of the few hours of daylight we have left, John. It'll be dark in a little while, and we won't be able to do anything but sleep. Let's make use of the time we have left. Then we'll bed down in the jeep. Together? Of course, numbskull. In that case, I'm praying that it gets dark real soon. Don't get your hopes up. We're too tired to take advantage of the night. Finding anything interesting in your father's diary? No, nothing that can directly link him to this place. I found a cross that's very similar to the one your father built. Oh, yeah? The diary mentions an identical one. Could the one you found have been the model it was based on? It's possible, yes. Finding anything interesting in your father's diary? But there is something in here about the cross. Mercury in the right arm, sulfur in the left, salt in the top end, and fire in the base. When we first met, when I told you to meet me at the airport, did anything disappear from the store? No, nothing. Well, part of the mercury my father had on hand but it was you who took it just before you disappeared. You told me that it could hold the key. Then I returned to the hotel, and Marcel used it to poison me, and... And when I came out of the coma, I had lost my memory. Finding anything interesting in your father's diary? There's one phrase that strikes me in particular. Mercury to remember. It's a quotation from Paracelso, it seems. But in your case, it was just the opposite, since in the end, it was the mercury that made you lose your memory, right? The American guy who had dinner with your father the night before they killed him. I think it was Henry White. Me too. But one thing's clear. He ordered my father's murder, and I swear that I'm going to make him pay for it. I think I remember meeting your father. What? When? I don't know, they're just random flashbacks, but I did meet him. You told me about a friend of your father's, Choke. A weird guy, he was sick in the head. He had a strange fascination with the Inquisition. It was like he wanted to go back there or something. I was scared of him. He shouted a lot, he, he got angry with my father. One day, they argued so much that my father kicked him out and... I never saw him again. My father never told me what it was about. I'm sorry I got you mixed up in all this, Pauline. Don't be sorry. Otherwise, I never would have met you. And that's the only thing that's keeping me going.
Hines de Orduña, the leader of the Order of the Flesh, commissioned exact replicas of the medallions on the facade of Notre Dame for a church he was planning to build. Do you understand, Shok? If we find the church, we find the Order of the Flesh. And the coin of judgment to outwit the creator himself.
Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters! Silence! I've asked you to come to the Hall of Eternity because the peace of our community has been disturbed. <gasps> One of us has prevented the carnal act from being consummated. <laughs> Show yourself, heretic! Who are you? My name is Miguel de Castro, son of Don Alvaro de Castro, the Duke of Fuentenegra. Is that so? We'll be sure to send our condolences to the Duke. <laughs> you have been my right hand since we started this church. But you've betrayed us! Confess your crime! I offered my soul to the devil to curry favor with him. That's a crime, haven't we all? I've opened tombs, profaned cadavers, and stolen their organs. I myself asked you to do it. You can't be repentant for that. <laughs> I've tortured innocent people to extract their knowledge. And you were probably one of the best torturers this order has ever seen. But that's not the source of your betrayal. I received the body of Christ in sin to please our Lord Satan. You know very well that such an honorable deed does not constitute disloyalty. I've murdered over 50 people in cold blood. Men, women, old people, and... And? You lost your resolve, heretic. You disobeyed my orders when you helped the one chosen to complete the carnal act. <gasps> And if the carnal act doesn't work... How can it fail? You yourself helped me to create it. Do you repent for your treachery? I'd do it again, Venus. <gasps> what should we do with him, brothers and sisters? Life! <laughs> or death? Let it be death. But Satan is the only merciful God, and he is going to give you a second chance. After your death, you would return to life to serve him again, docilely and without any possibility of betrayal. I'll never do it. No? Listen carefully. In nomine de nostri Satanas Luciferi Excelsi. After years of searching, We've hit on the exact combination of torture and alchemy elements that make up the formula for eternal life. Miguel de Castro, you've been tortured according to the ritual, and now you will drink from the chalice of eternal life. Salt and sulfur to purify it. Iron to strengthen it. Gold to return. Mercury. Fire! In honor of Satan! Mercury. And the coin of judgment to outwit the creator himself. Mercury to remember. The moment is at hand, brothers and sisters. Make him drink it. Now, brand him with fire so that we recognize him when he returns. Satan, you who have granted eternal life to this heretic, allow me to take it from him momentarily, so that he may rise again and give evidence of your works. Kill the prisoner. In the name of the whole forces, the sacrament of the priest, in and all the members of the diabolic forces of 
Mr. White's about to arrive. He wants you to prepare him a recipe. You remember it, don't ya? Cat got your tongue? I do remember you. And I, you, every time I look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Don't move! You've already mastered sword fighting. Why are you still here, apprentice? You still haven't taught me how to control the unknown sense. You are not ready. When will I be? Bring me a truth flower. And you'll teach me to use the unknown sense? Bring me a truth flower.
You have demonstrated that you possess the patience, the astuteness, the perseverance, and the respect for life required to learn to control your unknown sense. Thank you, Master. Have you finished your chores for today? Yes, Master. Good. Because today you won't be capable of doing anything else. Prepare yourself. And open your unknown sense. Prepare yourself. I'll never be able to, to do it. Never doesn't exist. Patience, yes. This time you lasted one second longer. Prepare yourself. Henry! John! Release her! Not yet. First, you're going to make me immortal. Not on your life. Such rancor. And what about her? No! Ah! You have 20 minutes to prepare the potion. Half hour at most. Your sainted mother has brought everything a good alchemist could possibly need. Right, Doctor? Hm. Recognize this, John? I found it in Bratislava. Who knows how it got there? Yeah? Well, a simple carpenter's cup would have worked just as well. John, I... Thank you, John. So, John, tell me everything. Did you meet Napoleon, Nostradamus, Marilyn Monroe, Hitler? Come on, John. I just want to enjoy a pleasant moment while the girl is reviving. Why were you pretending to be my mother? John, Henry made me do it. He threatened me. He invented this entire story to get you involved in the investigation. Who are you really? Who I say I am. Elaine yesterday. Is it true what you told me about... about your husband? Almost all of it. Frank was my thesis director, and I fell in love with him. He died at 84, three years ago, peacefully in his bed. Not in Cadway Station, like I told you. Henry invented that story, and had me tell it to you. Are you really an expert on medieval sects? All the books and articles written by Frank and myself that you read were authentic. How did you get involved in all this? Henry hired me two years ago when he had only one clue. The symbol of the Y. I learned of its connection to the Order of the Flesh, the torture methods they employed. But that's it. A few months ago, Henry hired me again. But this time at gunpoint. I pretended to be your mother up until your fake suicide in Paris. And when you came back to life, I played the role again, as if nothing had happened. What do you get out of all this? I stay alive. If Pauline comes back to life, we'll all drink from this chalice. You know, Henry. Do you really believe he'll let you drink from it? Yes. Uh, right, Henry? Of course, Elaine. You know me, and you know that I'm not a tight one. I'm the American millionaire who dedicates the most money and time to charity. White Enterprises shares its patents with any NGO that wants to use them for the common good. I've created hospitals, schools, and community centers all over the country. You know me, and you know that I do whatever is necessary to get what I want. But you also know that when I have something, I share it. Helene, you can rest assured that when I become immortal, you will too. How long were you torturing me in that room? From the day we took you there, two years went by. But I missed out on the first month, thanks to you. That scar, 
Does it hurt? Only when it's gonna rain. The doctors that Henry hired were the best. In less capable hands, I would have never made it. Did you enjoy torturing me? Yes. It made me feel good. Powerful. Dangerous. Fulfilled. Revenge is addictive. Did you ever feel guilty about it? One day, around a year after you got there, you had passed out after I broke several of your ribs with the baseball bat. You woke up and asked, Do you know what your name is? I said, and I quote, My name is Samuel. Samuel Cooper. You said only this, You're lucky, Samuel. It was weeks before I tortured you again. What do you think Henry will do if the potion works? Will he let you drink it? Henry is my best friend, and well, isn't that right, Henry? I'm your only friend, Cooper. The only one. But, do you know what? You're also my only friend. My life began at the same time yours did. In the university. The day we teamed up to kill Ralph Martinson. Nobody could understand how we got along so well. The hard-working weakling heir and the penniless jock. But what we had, and we have in common, nobody else shares. We're special, Cooper, you and I. How could I face immortality without you, Cooper? How many have you killed? <laughs> Not that many. Around 50. Well, twice that if I count you. Why did you kill Pauline's father? He didn't want to play ball. How did you get to Petit? It was your friend Boris, in Cadway Station. He says he lived in Paris, Berlin, Moscow. What a shame. Look, wax from the candles has dripped on the cake. I started monitoring the libraries in all of those cities. If anyone checked out a book on sects, Satanism, alchemy, the symbolism of the alphabet, the Inquisition, torture, I would hear about it. Our good man Petit was a voracious reader. Pauline told me that her father... He had spent the entire day with an American collector. They made some good deals. The man was going to pay us a lot of money. We were going to renovate the store, do some traveling. When I woke up the next morning, he... He had hanged himself. What really happened, Henry? To gain his trust, I told him that I wanted to have first option to buy all the antiques he found. But when I tried to get information about the order of the flesh out of him, he said that he had abandoned the investigation years ago without turning anything up. What did he tell you about his relationship with Choke? With you, you mean. It was you who set him on the trail of the order of the flesh. Probably thanks to some isolated flashback you had. But the flashbacks themselves made you crazy, unpredictable, egocentric, violent. You started to believe that you had lived in the time of the Inquisition, and you came to suspect that his daughter was a witch. Yes, John. You tried to kill your beloved Pauline. Aren't you happy to find out that we're not so different? What have you done to me, Henry? Everything imaginable. Can you be a little more specific? At first, you only burned vagrants. Why did you start torturing them? using the techniques of the Order of the Flesh. Because of you, John. When Doctor Yesterday connected your scar with the Order, and I saw the acts of torture they practiced, I mistakenly believed that behind them I'd find the secret of immortality. You made me what I am, John, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. What happened after the day that you shot me in the back and Boris escaped from the warehouse? The best period of my life. Imagine a boy with a cake you can never finish. A pervert with a girl who doesn't know how to keep her legs together. Or a psychopath with a victim that can be killed over and over again. But everything ends up getting old. I wanted to be like you and I started to investigate. How did it occur to you to hire me to investigate the Order of the Flesh? Your flashbacks were what did it. I realized that you sometimes remembered things from your previous lives. I used to love to electrocute you, for example. 
One time in ten, you would remember earlier electrocutions. When Doctor Yesterday stopped progressing and Petit refused to help me, I thought that your ability to remember your own past would be the best tool for reconstructing it. And it's worked out that way. Marcel screwed it up by making me drink mercury. That improved my ability to remember. Just the opposite. If it weren't for that, we probably wouldn't be here today. Marcel was an excellent professional and a good friend. But make no mistake, I'm not reproaching you and the girl for killing him. I probably would have ended up killing him myself anyway. You've promised Cooper and Elaine that you'll share immortality with them. And I will. I'd like to remind you of a couple of things you said earlier. Since he was no longer useful to me and he knew too much, I had to have him liquidated. What good will Elaine be to you? And you're immortal, Henry. Marcel was an excellent professional and a good friend. But make no mistake, I'm not reproaching you and the girl for killing him. I probably would have ended up killing him myself anyway. If you do this to all your friends, what's Cooper to think? Henry. Cooper. Huh? <laughs> Shit, John. What did they ever do to you? At last. It's just you and me. And the girl. Have you forgotten her that quickly? <gasps> Will she remember? You son of a bitch! No! Good God. Is this the price one has to pay for immortality? You'll pay for all this, Henry. Don't threaten me, John. You're just one bullet away from being my slave again. How do you feel now that you're immortal? Peaceful. Serene. I want to... I want to start all over again with a clean slate. Any idea how many bullets you have left, Henry? Don't mess with me, John. John, what are you doing? Welcome to eternity, Henry White. What do we do now, John? I don't want to remember anything else. But what I do want, Pauline, is that you help me to forget. Henry? Right. 